This is the second video of the master budget video. Last time I talked about budgeting for cash collection. Today I'm going to talk about production budget, how to budget for production. Okay. And that means how much product are we supposed to produce? Okay, or how much should be should we retain within the inventory and stuff? Okay, we have an exercise here, exercise 8.2. And uh, we have been given it says in units. Okay, so everything that we're computing here it says in units. This is not cash. This is not the amount, but the number. Okay, we have here says in unit budget says we have April fifty thousand, May seventy five thousand, ninety thousand, eighty thousand for June and July respectively. Okay, if you watch my previous video, I have highlighted some months. That means these months are not necessarily what we're looking for, but we need the information in these months to calculate for the quarter, okay? Because we are required to prepare a production budget for the second quarter, which April, May, and June, the second quarter of the month for this company called Down Under Product, okay? And I'm reminding you again, whenever you're doing a budget, remember to put the title. Okay, so the title of the budget, the company, the production budget as the title, and for the quarter ended June 2019. Okay, you can choose whatever date that you want if, it's, if it does not specify. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this. So budgeted unit sales, the company we know, April, they budgeted 50,000. Okay, and in May, they budgeted 75,000. In June, 90,000. Okay, and in July, that was 80,000, it's highlighted in red, okay? That means it's not part of the quarter, but we need it, okay, as we go, as we move on. Now, for the whole quarter, the quarter total, how much unit did the company budget, okay? So by the unit sales, so you use the sum, Auto sum to add everything together. And then at the end of quarter, the bad company has budgeted unit sales of 215,000. Now, as we go ahead, we need to add the unit that the company desire to have in finished goods. Okay. So whatever they produce, they sell. Okay, they produce and sell but the company will want to retain some amount of units in their finished goods. Okay. And if we move on to see that it says, past experience has shown that end of month, if month inventory levels must equal 10% of the following month's sale. Okay, so 10% of the following month's sale. What does that mean? That means in April, we will retain 10% of May's. In May, we will retain 10% of June, okay? Which means in March, we will retain 10% of April. So this is what I'm going to do right here, okay? So I'll put an equal to 10% times April. Okay, and notice, okay, notice that this is, in, this is inconsistent with what the company has given us here. March was 5,000 units. Even if they haven't given you, you know that March should be 5,000 units here. So you just drag it all the way to June. No, don't drag it over there. Okay, so you just drag it all the way to May, okay? So May will give you 10% of June, okay? But the reason why it threw, it threw us off is it is referencing, you know, going, but it reference quarter, the quarter total. Here you need the 10%, 10% of July, not the total quarter, okay? 10% of July. That is why we need these two months. Okay, so 10% of July has to be returned in June. Does that make sense? Okay, good. All right. So we did not really need this information, but it's there 
as a, I mean, check figure to know, to help us know if we did the right thing. But we got it right. So we don't need to worry. I worry. Okay. Now, at the end of the quarter, okay, how much goods are we expecting to retain? That is what is what we are retaining in June because June is the end of the quarter. So what we are retaining in June is what we'll be retaining at the end of the quarter, which is 8,000 units. Okay. Now we will move on with total needs. How much do we need to produce? Since we have budgeted for this, and retaining these, we will add them together. Okay, so we use the auto sum to add these two, 57, 500. What we do is we just drag it all the way to June. Okay. Now, can also drag it all the way to the quarter, but that will work. But this is what we budgeted at the beginning of the quarter, and this is what we want to retain at the end of the quarter. That will give us 223,000 at the end of the quarter. So these are the what we need, okay? Budgeted production this is what we need to produce. If we want to produce 50,000 and retain 7,500, we need to produce 57,500 within that month. So pay attention to what your CFO gives you, okay? That this is what we want to achieve. Okay, we want to produce 50,000 in April, but we want to retain 7,500 7, or 7,500 of May. So how much do we need to produce in April? That is what we want to produce in April plus what we want to retain of May. That makes sense, right? Okay, let's move on to the next one. Now, let's unit of beginning goes in the finished inventory, okay? In the beginning goes in the finished inventory. Okay. If we want to produce this, and this is what is left, we want to produce this in April, but 5,000 is left in March. That means this 5,000 is sitting when we started April, okay? This 5,000 is sitting when we started April. So we have to take it out, okay, as we will overproduce, okay? If you remember the T account in finished goods and transfer from work in progress and others, 5,000 is sitting here. When we started, it is here. It is within this. So we have to take it out so we don't take into account that one. Okay, so what I will do is less the beginning of the previous month. So I will select the previous month was March. And then I will just drag it all the way to June. And that gives me 9,000. But here, okay, here is also a tricky part that you have to pay attention to. This is the whole of quarter. What was the beginning inventory when we started the quarter? That was the quarter started in April. So that was the 5,000 beginning inventory here. Yeah. Okay. You know, when we did the ending inventory, the ending inventory, the ending month was June. So we took June. Okay. This was meant to be in black. Okay. So we took June. And this was meant to be in red. Okay. The ending was June. So we chose June. Here, the beginning is April. So we choose April as the beginning. Does that click? Yes, it does, it should. <laughs> okay, now, now that we will be subtracting from it, so we don't take into consideration, we have to compute it how much we have. So that is the total need minus the beginning inventory, which is 52,500. So we drag it all the way to June, okay? And we go ahead and drag it all the way to the quarter. So this is what we have budgeted according to the problem. This is what the company's product and budget should be. I'll go over again. The company made 50,000. Now, they want to retain 7,500 of the, oh, they want to retain 10% of the following month. 
So they will retain that 10%. So this is the total that was needed. But they have completed all these things, but there is 5,000 sitting when they started. So they have to take that one out so they don't over budget. So that's why you take the beginning one, which is from the previous month, and this one. So in April, the company needs to produce 52,500. In May, 76,500. In June, 89,000. And whole of the quarter, they need to produce 218,000. And you can double check by using the auto sum to select everything here, and that gives you the same number, 218,000. Thank you for watching. Next time, we will continue with another budget, another sector of budget. And I hope within a few days, we can finish the whole master budget. Thank you for watching. See you next time.